Welcome to this video on NDB tracking with the G1000. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to use the bearing pointer to track to and from an NDB. The NDBs might seem like old technology, but these bearing pointers are still used in airline cockpits today, so this is an essential skill for any instrument rating student. Before we dive into the G1000, it's crucial to understand what an NDB is. The non-directional beacon is a ground-based radio transmitter that sends out a continuous signal in all directions. Pilots can then use their automatic direction finding equipment, or ADF, to display their bearing to or from the station. Every one of these NDBs, and indeed every radio nav aid, has a maximum range at which it can be used. This is known as the Designated Operational Coverage, or DOC. If you intend to use a certain NDB for navigation, for example to fly the hold in your IR skills test, then you should check the dock during your pre-flight planning. The dock for each NDB is found in the AIP. We're going to use the Lima November Zulu NDB at Linz Airport in Austria. So we'll look up the Austrian AIP, go to the aerodrome section, Find the list of airports and open the entry for Linz Airport. We can now do a simple search for Lima November Zulu and we'll find the entry for the Lima November Zulu NDB, which tells us the designated operational coverage is 40 nautical miles. Jumping into the cockpit now, and to set up any radio nav aids, we're going to go through the process of select, identify, display. First, Select the frequency, in this case I'll enter 327 for the Lima November Zulu NDB. Next, press the ADF button on the audio panel to listen to the Morse code identifier and ensure the NDB is working properly. <coughs> Lastly, we need to set up the bearing pointer display. On the G1000, press the PFD option soft key, then press bearing 2 until NDB is shown. This bearing pointer simply points at the NDB ground station, so we can see that our bearing to the NDB is 165 degrees. Let's say that ATC tell us to track 160 to the NDB. From this overview, we can see that we need to turn to the right of the needle to intercept a track of 160 degrees to the NDB. However, this can be harder to visualize in the cockpit when the only navigation information you've got in front of you is the bearing pointer. To help with this, we use the saying, push the head and pull the tail. In this case, we're using the head of the needle to track to the NDB, so we need to push the head. What this means is the head of the needle will always be pushed away from the nose of the aircraft. So if we didn't turn our aircraft at all, the head of the needle would keep being pushed further and further to the right. To intercept the desired track of 160 degrees to the Lima November Zulu, we need to turn past the head of the needle onto a heading of say 210 degrees. On this new heading, the head of the needle will be pushed to the left, away from the nose of the aircraft. We'll hold this heading and wait for the head of the needle to be pushed onto our desired track of 160. The bearing pointer is approaching the desired track of 160 now, so we need to anticipate this and turn onto a heading that will maintain this track of 160. As you get closer and closer to the beacon, the bearing pointer will become more sensitive. Continue tracking the beacon until you're about half a mile from it. Here, I can see the pointer has moved to the left onto about 155, so I need to make a small correction. I need the head of the needle to move to the right onto 160 degrees, so I'll turn left onto 150. The head of the needle is now being pushed right onto 160. I can see the pointer is starting to get more sensitive, which tells me I must nearly be overhead the NDB. So now I'll just hold my heading until I've passed overhead the beacon. 
Flying overhead the NDB, you'll see the needle will fall from pointing ahead to pointing behind you. How accurately you fly overhead the NDB will determine how quickly the needle will fall. The needle has fallen very quickly here, so I must have flown almost directly overhead the beacon. Once you've passed overhead the NDB, you're now tracking away from the beacon. This is where we use pull the tail. We can see here the tail of the needle is on 160 degrees. Let's say we need to fly away from the NDB on a track of 210. To intercept 210 degrees, we turn in the same direction that we want the tail of the needle to move, and the tail will be pulled towards our heading. Again, I'll hold this new heading until the tail of the needle is approaching the desired track of 210 degrees. Then turn onto a heading that will maintain it. The last thing we need to consider is the wind. So far, we've been tracking to and from the NDB in calm winds, but if there is any crosswind, then you'll have to account for the drift. This means that it will be rare that your heading should be exactly on the head or exactly on the tail of the needle. In fact, this should only ever occur when you have a direct headwind or a direct tailwind. Accounting for the wind becomes quite simple with the G1000 because we have the track diamond, which is the small magenta diamond on the HSI. The track diamond indicates your actual track over the ground, so once you've pushed the head or pulled the tail of the bearing pointer onto your desired track, you can simply turn to put the track diamond on the head or tail of the needle. If the track diamond is to the right of the head of the needle, then you will push the head to the left. If the track diamond is to the left of the needle head, then you will push the head to the right. We can say the same about the tail of the needle. If the track diamond is off to one side of the tail, then the tail will be pulled towards the track diamond. Remember that, although we've been looking at the bearing pointer in detail, you must maintain your instrument scan at all times and not get fixated on the pointers. Tracking any radio nav aid simply consists of flying straight and level with occasional turns to make small corrections. The key here is to use the attitude to maintain accurate, straight and level flight on a heading that will continue tracking the NDB. That concludes our lesson on NDB tracking, and I hope this has been useful on your journey to becoming an instrument rated pilot. We've got a whole online course designed specifically for both EASA and UK instrument rating students that teaches you everything you need to know to pass your IR test. See our course and loads of other resources at clearflight.co.uk.